is balloon bread. Well, one of its many names, actually. And it's a bread that's hollow on the inside, crispy and crunchy on the exterior. We also filled it with brown sugar and a bit of flour on the inside, making it more like a cookie or biscuit. It's really crunchy, it's super delicious. It's actually a flat bread by category, but it's nothing like pita or focaccia. Okay, let's jump straight in. So we're using poolish for this recipe, just for some added flavor. And for more information on exactly how to make it and its benefits, please check out our previous video on poolish and pre-ferments, link in the description box. For this video, I'm just going to quickly go through the steps. Uh, mix 100 grams of all-purpose flour and 100 grams of water in a bowl. Add a fourth of a teaspoon of instant yeast. Let sit at room temperature for five to six hours or leave in the fridge overnight. And when it looks bubbly and slightly deflated, just like this, after puffing up, then we're done. So this fantastic poolish is going to go straight into our glass mixing bowl where we're going to start making the main dough. We want to make sure to scrape it all out using our spatula. After that, we're going to add 100 grams of all-purpose flour. One teaspoon of sugar and a pinch of salt, just a little bit. Just add a little bit of flavor to the bread. And finally, 10 grams of water. We'll mix it together with a spatula for a few rounds. Just trying to get everything incorporated. Then I'm gonna go in with my hands. So I'm just clean this up. So what I'm doing here is just getting all the dry parts incorporated into the dough, pushing it in just like this, holding it in. Just gonna keep going. I also have a scraper here, which is very handy for cleaning up the sides of the bowl. And this shouldn't take too long. When there are no dry and loose bits hanging around, we're going to turn our dough out onto the counter and we'll start properly kneading it. All right, so go at it with both hands. This is actually a very nice dough right from the get-go because it's low in hydration and fat, so it isn't very sticky or hard to knead at all. We can also use our scraper to clean up any parts that stick to the surface. It's also quick to form gluten, as can be seen by the way it's becoming less and less sticky and more cohesive as well as smoother. Although it is still quite rough, it's much better than just now. So just keep kneading it. Alright, so after just about five to six minutes of kneading, the dough should be done. It's so my palms are already quite clean, and your counter or work surface should be very clean. The dough should look quite smooth and feel taut, tense when you press it. There's that slight bounce when you push it down. That's a good sign that the dough has achieved a pretty high level of gluten development. So we're gonna do a final test on the dough just to make sure it's really done. We'll do a window pane test, taking a small piece, trying to stretch it thin enough to see light, and I'm just gonna do that right now. So just rip off a small piece like that, it's fine. And stretch it out thin enough to see the light. All right, and this passes, obviously. I don't know if you can see it from all the way over there, but you can clearly see it. Is it visible? This is really good. Great, so we're going to round this dough, just getting it into a more even shape. So you can palm here. Oh, it looks good. Then we're gonna cover it with the glass mixing bowl. Like that. And we want to bulk ferment the dough for one hour or until the dough at least doubles in size. 
You want it to really fully expand and ferment so we get that flavor and it's also easier to work with. Okay, it's been an hour. Our dough has dramatically expanded in size. So we'll lift the glass bowl, put it aside, then continue by first deflating the dough. And then after that, we want to divide this dough into six equal pieces. So I'm gonna weigh the whole dough first on the scale. So I've weighed the whole dough and it came out to 318 grams. We're going to divide that number by six. So that's about 53 grams. So they should all be around 53 grams. Now I'm going to divide them roughly first, just using a scraper to firmly cut through. So I just use a scraper to firmly cut through and now I'm just going to even them out. I'm also going to quickly pre-shape them as we go along by rounding them into little balls with my palm. Very nice, quick and easy. Just like that. Yeah, I'm going to be repeating that for all the dough. Once they're all done, I want to cover them again with the glass bowl. I'm going to rearrange them using a little bit of flour just to control any sticking. So I'm just going to cover them again with the glass bowl. So we'll leave them to rest for about 15 minutes. This is a bench rest where really just letting the dough relax so that we can shape them easily later. While waiting, we're also going to do some preparations. First, make sure the oven is ready. We want to heat it to 220 degrees Celsius. Then we want to prepare the filling for our dough. We're using a one-to-one -one ratio of brown sugar and flour for a less sweet taste, but you could just use plain brown sugar, white sugar, or if you prefer it plain, you could just use oil on the inside. Okay, so I've got three tablespoons of all-purpose flour and three tablespoons of brown sugar. I'm gonna mix them together and that'll be our filling. Okay, it's been 15 minutes and the dough looks loose and relaxed, ready to undergo shaping. So, open it up. We'll take one dough ball here. Just start with this one. And then, using a bit of flour just to control the sticking. The amount of filling is also up to your own taste. So we like it quite flavorful, so we're adding quite a bit, tucking it into the center. Then we want to seal the filling inside the dough like this. So if you've ever made ba'al before, it's something like that. Although it's a little bit less worrisome. You just need to make sure you pinch really well to fully close off the dough. We don't want any waste. Okay, now that they all have their fillings, we're going to start rolling the dough out. And it's important that we roll them out thin enough so that they can fully inflate and fully puff up in the oven. If they're not thin enough, then it's basically just gonna become another kind of Asian bread. So I'm gonna take a bit of flour to the surface. 
but not too much. I'm going to take the dough, starting from the one that we filled first. So this one is the most relaxed one right now. I'm going to flip it over. Uh, on the rolling pin too. Let's start so the key to doing this is to do it gently. So don't push so hard that you make the brown sugar come out. But also firmly enough just to get it to stretch out and get really thin. So a little bit of pressure. As you can see, you can actually kind of see the brown sugar through the dough. That's that's okay, that's a good sign. Make sure that the rolling pin and the dough are well floured so as to prevent any sticking. Okay, so this looks pretty thin enough. See? And I'm just going to put it onto the baking pan that we lined with a silicone mat. You could use parchment paper instead too. Repeat that for all of the dough balls. So starting again, um, the second one that we fill first. A little bit of fun. They do get a little bit sticky at this stage, don't be surprised. Put your hands as well as the rolling pin of well flour. Okay, now that all the dough have been prepared, they're going straight into the preheated oven right away. They don't need proofing time because this is meant to be a crisp and light flatbread recipe, not like a regular bread where you would expect a fluffy and airy dough. So, into the oven at 220 degrees Celsius, top and bottom heat for 10 to 15 minutes or until they look golden brown and have fully puffed up. And they're done! Oh my goodness, look at them! So beautiful, so crispy. These are best straight out of the oven. So eaten immediately while they're still warm, just like this. Oh, they look so good. Okay, let's try breaking them. Yeah. Oh, see that hollow? That hollow in here. Listen to this. This is crunchy, crispy, absolutely delicious, and best of all, it's super easy to make. If you're a beginner and you're looking for something good, sweet, fun, and easy to make, this is the recipe for you.